All right, hey, welcome to the Hades and Megamoto channel. So I'm shooting a show and tell video. I apologize for the traffic noise. There's nothing I can do about it. But, uh, but yeah, so the video I have today, it, the video, the thing I have to do to show and tell is uh, is this right here. So it's a trailer box, trailer tongue box. Um, it's not exactly a motorcycle specific video, but it goes on my motorcycle trailer. So, and I've been using my motorcycle trailer a whole lot lately. So uh, I've been kind of upgrading it. I've, I've, Hades Omega um, practices the art of uh, kaizen. <laughs> that just means continual evolution. Okay, so, so I'm constantly upgrading this thing. Um, this my my Harbor Freight trailer has gone through many transformations over the years. That's the great thing about it. You know, do whatever you want with it. But anyway, here is the DZ trailer tongue box. All right, let's go take a closer look at it. All right, so here's a closer look at it. Um, so here's what it comes with. Um, it comes with, uh, let's go over what it comes with and then I'll tell you how I got it. It comes with the instruction manual here. Okay. And a bunch of little white chips all over the place. I don't know why. Okay. This is a bag of fasteners right here. It's a bunch of fender washers and like self-tapping screws, which I probably might not be using. And the box itself. So there it is. All right. All right. So we've gone over what it comes with. Um, I can tell you. Uh, so I bought this from uh, Amazon. Um, I don't know where else you can get it, but Amazon was the place. So I heard uh, on from I saw on some from somebody on Barf that they had put one of these trailer boxes on their trailer, their Harbor Freight trailer, and I was like, hmm, you know what? That would be really handy. The thing I don't like about the Harbor Freight trailer is there's really no room to store anything unless you make some kind of bracket or strap it down to something. Um, it would be nice for to put like you know when you go camping to not have to put everything in the van. You could put some stuff on the trailer. Um, the only thing is, uh, there's not honest, there's not that, um, there's not so honest people out there in the world and they will steal your stuff if it's like out there in the open. So, or if it's in a treasure box, so that's pretty much what you, I would call this thing is a treasure box <laughs> because like, you know, it's there, it's got a little locking thing on it. And so there must be something valuable in there. So some people are, might want to steal some stuff from it. So, <laughs> but, uh. If it wasn't in a box, I guess, you know, and if it was just lying on a trailer, people would take it anyway. So, you know, there's, that's a sad part, you know, of the world and, you know, America in particular, because I don't think you would have that kind of problem in, like, Japan or something, you know. People don't do that kind of stuff in Japan. But uh, but here, people steal stuff, steal anything they can get their hands on or they can see, you know. So, uh, so at least that takes the seeing part out. <laughs> But anyway, it's it's a little extra storage for your trailer, so you can put some more stuff. More, you can bring more junk with you on your trips, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah, yeah. Because generally, I I sleep in the van. You know, I the camping is in the van. You know, and then the, just the stuff that I don't really need right away, like tools and stuff, or like you know tie down straps. You can put it in there. Maybe you can put like fuel in there. You know, all sorts of stuff. Um, you can't really strap a lot of stuff to the trailer. Unless you have like a mount, like if you made a fuel bottle mount or something, you know, you can put it there and strap it in there, you know, but it's like, it's out in the open. At least if it's in the box, it's a little more secure. Um, and another reason I bought the plastic one, so there's plastic ones and there's metal ones. The metal ones, obviously it's more durable. Plastic, I think it would be more, a little more resistant to corrosion. That's one reason. And it's light. Um, it's pretty light. I, let's see if I can pick it up with one hand. I'm going to pick it up by the lid here. Yes, I can pick it up with one hand. It, it, I would say, well, it's a, it's a bit heavy. I'd say it's probably more. It's, it's more than ten pounds. I'll tell you that. It's probably close close to around fifteen pounds. So, but it doesn't add a whole lot of weight to your trailer. You don't want to add a whole lot of weight to the front of your trailers, particularly in the tongue area, because uh, you have a you have a tongue weight. Like you don't want to exceed it. It's not good. I think it's like four hundred pounds for for a class two or something. Um, don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here it is. So I got it on Amazon for about a hundred dollars. Um, 
It was a hundred dollar ship, so that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I got it in a really, really big box. Pretty much, it fits in the box perfectly, and it was a little beat up. And I could tell you, I I didn't know it was a all. It was it was beat up when I got it. So so there's like a dent right here. I might be able to get a heat gun and press that out maybe. Um, and there's another dent back here. I saw yeah, right back here. Is if I open it. going in here too not too bad so it's not the most durable plastic box ever you know I wouldn't put stuff that's too heavy in it either so you don't want to add too much tongue weight so so it has a hasp right here for a lock padlock put that right there put a nice beefy lock on it um, and yeah it comes with this instruction manual here and these mounting hardware um, I already kind of read the manual. Um, I'm just going to go install it and tell you how I did it. Um, inspect your product for damage and missing parts before proceeding for installation. So what am I going to do? Am I going to return the whole thing because it's it's like got a couple dents on it, you know? Uh, I think I'm good. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's made by DZ, quality truck accessory people. So there it is. Take a quick walk around. It's got some of this kind of like diamond plating molding here it looks pretty sweet it looks a little tougher than it looks but the plastic is a little well the lid is strong the lid is really strong not the base no the base is just thin plastic it's just like it's just a thin plastic everything else is just a thin plastic yeah i would say that's maybe like one eighth thick maybe not even an eighth an eighth thick plastic the, the best thing about this is the the lid it's maybe you can sit down on it. Let's try to sit down on it. Yeah, you can sit down on it. <laughs> if you wanted to, you could sit down on it. So, so yeah. Um, so the instructions say, I guess you just put it on the uh, on the tongue. I may have to move my uh, my my trailer has this kind of bolt-on uh, Harbor Freight uh, tongue wheel thing here, or adjustable wheel. Uh, I may have to move that somewhere else. So. It's okay. Um, it's pretty big. Uh, it's it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> and seeing it in person, actually, so that's a good thing, I guess. Um, it's pretty thin. Uh, I would say if you wanted to reinforce it, the bottom at least, so you can put some heavier stuff in there. Um, I would say uh, I would say cut a piece of wood that was almost the same size there and then use that as a base you know um, so it says the instruction man I'm not gonna go over the instruction manual but it does say to how you would install it is uh, you would put it on the tongue and then you would drill four holes and then you would bolt it on with this I think the fender washers are supposed to go on top of the plastic and then this just kind of kind of bolts it on there I don't think we're gonna use that I think we're gonna use actual bolts I'm gonna use a bolt and nut locking that but we'll probably wind up using these big old fender washers so. comes with four of them so just four so they just go on the top so we're gonna to have to go drill some holes in here and I hope it fits on the, the harbor freight tongue hmm. it doesn't I may have to sell it <laughs> okay right. so uh, so there it is uh, it's not mounted yet I just kind of put it on there to see how well it fits and it's actually a little too big for the for the um, the tongue um, little a-frame here um, so what I think we're gonna have to do is um, so right where it's at right now is where I'm gonna mount it but because um, I feel that's like that's probably the perfect uh, perfect distance from the deck and the thing you know um, it's like you don't want it to be all the way forward you know it. it can't have it too far back because it'll get in the way of the tie down here um, and I also do put a uh, there's a little fence thingy that I put here too. So, in, in fact, I probably might want to move it forward a little bit. But I want to get as much wide coverage as I can of it. Um, but actually, I think if it sticks, if it sticks out from the frame, it's actually it's actually a good thing. It actually makes it stronger because you know the distance that that is not not a supported is is less is is you know it's stronger basically. So what what we're gonna have to do. Is we're gonna have to move this. I'm gonna. Ha I think I'm gonna 
we're going to move this over here. Um, we're going to flip-flop it and then and do it. All right. And then, and then yeah, I think we're just going to have to... Uh, how are we going to do this? It has to be able to touch the frame. Uh, how, how do I do it? I know. It's a good question. How do I do it? <laughs> how am I supposed to know where to drill? That's a good question. Damn. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll okay. let you know. Okay, so that's pretty much how I want it right there. I haven't mounted it yet, but uh, it's just kind of sitting on there. It's uh, So I measured it's four and a half inches from my deck here. And I measured it on both sides to make sure they're even. So, so this and this is okay. Um, and I measured how far, oh, how far the frame is from the edge here. And that's about like three inches. And this is like one and a half. And they're roughly the same. Doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but pretty close. And then that's I moved this as far forward as I could. Um, yeah, so it doesn't really interfere with anything. You can still, uh, you can still, uh, what you might call it, um, swing the leg up, no problem. Swing the leg up and down, no problem. So, all right. So now we're gonna go. Okay. Try so and, I've uh, kind of figured a way to uh, to figure out how to uh, drill the holes is. Um, Basically, you press down on it, and it'll you'll feel it. You'll feel it through the frame because the rest is like it's all flimsy and stuff, right? But here it's solid, so you wanna you obviously want to drill the solid part, like maybe right here. And you can kind of guess, you can kind of look at both sides and see like where you're drilling. You know, like if you look up, like and the box and the frame at the same time, it's not too hard. Um, so I'm gonna just drill it just far enough where the fender washers will not interfere with the side of the box on each on each four corners um, you could probably do more than one you probably do more than four I mean um, you probably do one in the middle if you want but they only give you enough to do four so maybe that's what we'll go with right uh, and I'm probably gonna I'm gonna finish this up tonight and I'll shoot the rest of the video tomorrow so you guys don't have to watch a dark video <laughs> um, uh, there's one thing I want to no uh, note that uh, if you have that trailer tongue box on there, um, you will not be able to fold your trailer. I have a Harbor Freight folding trailer, and well, you can fold it. You can fold the back part. You can fold the back part to the front part. That's it. Um, you can't like fold it, fold it. But I, like I said, I've already been modifying my trailer in a way like where I can't, I won't be able to fold it anymore. Like I have to take these out to fold it. I have to take the chocks off to fold it. This this chalk does not. It's this chalk isn't easy to take out, um, so so yeah. Um, I am ne probably never gonna fold this thing um, upright anymore. But you can fold it. You can fold it like this way. If you take the the ramps off, it's just the back part will be touching the the chalk, and I don't think it will interfere with the with the box at all. So because um, this trailer folds in like two pieces, yeah, yeah. This one folds like this, kind of like a like a uh, what do they call it a jackknife or a folding knife and then the other part folds the other way like down this way and like I, I like I said I'm never gonna probably I'm probably never gonna fold it upright anymore so um, I will probably fold it in half to save some space you know but that part always has to be down because um, the 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 wheel that little um, trailer wheel or trailer jack is a uh, is always it has to hold it up so or you could just just lay it on the ground, I guess. You don't really this and this necessarily need it, but but this this trailer has been hooked up to my van for like years. So like, like pretty much this this trailer goes wherever the van goes, which is really annoying. You know, I can't if I want to go use the van for whatever, then I, I I have to take the trailer. I mean, I guess I could detach the trailer, but Nadie's and Nadie's lazy like that. You know, <laughs> like I said, I've been using the trailer a whole lot. So all right, so so yeah, um, I will finish it. I will finish mounting it, and then I'll, I'll let you know what I got. But but pretty much that's how that's how I'm figuring out where to mount it is uh, is like I'm pressing down on the bottom and and then like finding out which one is a solid part, and then I'm just gonna drill it. That's it. Um, it's pre pretty simple. Um, I have to say I am not very happy with how flexy the bottom is. Um, what I'm probably gonna do is like I said is is to get a piece of wood and just put it in there. Um, even just like it doesn't you don't even have to cut it triangularly if you don't want to, you know. So I'll see if okay. I can find a piece so of wood. So Mega has decided to go with these uh, um, what, what is it called? Fasteners. Instead of the uh, 
the uh, self-tapping screws. Um, but we're going to use the fender washer. It's like the biggest fender washer I've ever seen. It's like two inches wide or something. <laughs> um, so th I think this is a 3 16 I don't think it's a quarter. It's not quite there. It might be a quarter. I'm not sure. It's a quarter of 3 16 Don't quote me on that. And I have, I have four locking washers. They're all SAE stuff because I got it from the SAE box. And they're stainless steel and they're button heads. So I had a whole bunch of them in my little box here, so I might as well use them, right? Instead of just letting them sit around. Uh, I did want to use the kind of bigger ones like this. I think it's a 3 8 um, Yeah, so that, that leads me to believe this is a quarter. Um, but it doesn't fit in the hole and I have to make the hole bigger, so I'm just like, eh, let's just, just let's go with what, what's already there. Um, instead of having to modify it. So we're going to go, we're going to use this. I think, I think, 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 I think we're going to use a washer on the bottom too. So I'm going to go ahead and get some, another set of four washers that are like a quarter inch. Okay, so here's some stuff in the manual. If you guys want to see, um, clean, you know, I think this is just kind of some general stuff. Uh, cause it doesn't, it doesn't mention the box at all. There's like a limited lifetime warranty. This is just some random, you know. It's not specific to this box, but this one is. Um, so you got A, the tr uh, triangle toolbox. That's the toolbox itself, or I call it a tongue tongue storage box or something. Um, you've got the sheet metal screw, um, four of them. And you got four fender washers. They're, they are two inches, see? And uh, three eighths um, tools. I guess that's the socket size or wrench size, and a 316 drill bit size. I tell you this now, man. The 316 drill bit size. I, well, you know what? It might work for the sheet metal screws, but it's like, what? Why would you use a 316 size when the sheet metal screw is a quarter inch, right? So I don't know. I don't know what. Maybe maybe like the threaded part is only 316. I don't know. But I used one step, one bit st bigger than the quarter inch, and it worked perfectly. Um, so yeah, so there you go. It says to install these bolts and stuff on four, the four corners of the box. You can pretty much put it anywhere you want. You just because it's a custom deal, you know. And then it says to bolt, drill it, and then bolt it basically. And then uh, locks are pro provided as a deterrent to inadvertently open or easy access the contents of your box. Contents stored in toolbox are the responsibility of the user. So that means. That just means don't put anything valuable in there, okay? Because um, uh, it, it's only keep honest people out is what, <laughs> what I heard. Uh, after drilling, it is recommended that a sealant or rust inhibitor be placed around the holes drilled in the body panel. Nah, you don't really need to do that. Um, I guess you could use, just spray some WD-40 on it, you know? Um, it's, I don't think it, it's, it's gonna, like it would take many, many long time, many years for it to, to get corroded and stuff you know and plus it's plastic you know um, it, you have to worry about your trailer you know uh, you could probably paint yeah you could probably paint that part that you drilled I think that's what it's talking about like it doesn't your trailer will start rusting you know where you drilled it so just uh, what's the word uh, um, just spray paint you know use some spray paint on that part you drilled um, I'm not gonna do that uh, so these are the parts for it this is the actual hasp the rivets and the uh, and a push pin rivet for the hinges. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and those are all. Well, we'll take a look at that in the box later. All right. So that's the instruction manual. So I didn't say I was going to go over it, but I just did because I kind of looked at it. Um, it's a very kind of general instructions, and it's pretty straightforward how you install it. Yeah. Uh, you could also install it in a truck bed. It's funny, it, says, it actually says to not use self-tapping screws. Self-tapping screws can be used only on chest-style toolboxes being installed in a truck bed. But it says premium J-bolts for crossover toolboxes. I, I don't know. Um, but that's a different toolbox. Like I said, this is all this, the first two pages, aren't even pertinent to, the, uh, <laughs> to, the, uh, to this. So this is like just some general information for stuff and then this is the specific one right here that you're interested in I guess it's nice that you can order these parts from them if, uh, if anything you know, if you need them um, I don't think so <laughs> I think rivets are probably easy to find and the hasp shouldn't be too hard to find either so all right